Hello, my name's Steve Martin, and today we're going to be sketching the graph. See, sketch, just so uh, it's up in the open. X cubed plus 5x squared plus 2x minus 8. And we're going to do this, we're going to find n behaviors, we're going to uh, find all the zeros, and we're going to find the behaviors by the zeros, and a few points in between the zeros to see how far off they might go. Um, we're going to do this using synthetic division, rational zeros. And rational zeros is where you take you know, the coefficients of the end factor and the, the largest factor and uh, divide them to find out what the rational zeros may be, we'll, but we'll go over that later. Uh, right now, what we're going to do is we're going to find the end behaviors which by doing that you look at the largest factor which is the x cubed and find the parent function which the parent function really is x cubed itself because x cubed is a, a function in itself which looks kind of like a sideward z where it's got kind of like that happening on the end so when we go and find the largest and smallest zeros on our graph that's what the end factor or the end behaviors will be where they just kind of shoot off and the sideward z type option or behavior, but um, right now we're going to do use the rational zero function, which is where we take coefficient here, find all the multiplicities, something of that, which would be let's see if we can get one, two, and four, eight, and four x to coefficients one, which for that we can just get one, but plus or minus all these, so we can get plus or minus one, two, four, eight. I find a reason to rewrite that when it's 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 4 over 1, and 8 over 1. It's pretty straightforward. So, um, it's like a shot in the dark. P pretty much at this point, when you use synthetic division and try to use rational zeros, it's really a guess or check function where you just kind of take a shot in the dark and pick a number. I always feel lucky when I take uh, negative 2. So you'll take negative 2, you put it in a little box, hide away. And you take all the coefficients for all these and put them in a row. 1, 5, 2, negative 8. And uh, what you do is you'll take the first one and just drop it. Then you'll multiply these together and place them right here and add them. And this one would be 3. Then do that again. Negative 2, multiply with 3. Negative 6. So add those together, we'll equal the negative 4. Negative 2 times negative 4 equals 8, and add those together, gets a 0. Now, if this is a 0, if you actually use a rational 0 in the uh, synthetic division properly, you should get a 0, which this would be a remainder. If there is no remainder, that is a proper 0. Now, that doesn't, this, you don't get lucky and get on the first one like me, great, I'm doing a video and I actually guessed right for the first time. Uh, because I totally didn't do this earlier to double check myself. But, uh, if you hit a number at the remainder, that's not a zero, you have to go back, try a different one. But since this one is a zero, this is a factor, so this would be x plus 2 is a factor of that, which that's a zero, negative 2 is one of our zeros. Now, to do this, pretty much you uh, take the coefficients here and you just count up, this would be a remainder. This would be your whole number, tens place, right there, just whole number. This would be our x, and this would be our x uh, squared. So let's just drop that down, put it right here. X squared plus 3x minus 4. And at this point, we could just factor this one out. This one actually works out pretty well. Where we have x, x. And I'm seeing plus 4 minus 1. Yeah, that, that should work out. So our factors and zeros for this are negative 4 because it's the opposite of this, really. It's what you would put in here to make it 0. Negative 4, 1, and negative 2. So if we go over to our graph, we can take 1, negative 2, and negative 4 as our zeros, which are awesome. That's great. Fantastic. Now, to find out the behaviors around these zeros, what you do is you take whatever number would make it 0 for here. So this one... To make this zero, it'd be negative four, and plug in the other function or the other factors, and whatever's on the outside is really its well the behavior. 
that, that's its uh that's how drastic it is for its behavior but the behavior since these are all like an odd one uh, multiplicity their behaviors are that they pass through the point so when these when it reaches this point if it was an even multiplicity it would bounce so it kind of ricochet off and it kind of a U but since it's odd they all pass through which makes this much simpler but uh, I'm going to take advantage of this part right here. We have our lowest zero and our highest zero. So I'm just going to put the um, the end behaviors right there. Which this one kind of shoots off right there. You can see nervous on camera right there. Yeah. All squiggly. And then this one shoots off just like that. So those are our end behaviors. That's how it's going to look at the end points of this. But anyway, finding the... The behaviors of where it's each of these points. So for the first one, it would be x plus four. Then this would be a you'd plug what this should be to turn it into a zero into all the other ones for x. So you take this one to be negative four. Up to my marker minus one. Negative four plus two. And this would end up as a negative five. And this would end up as a negative two. So what you'll do is you'll multiply those together and put it on the outside of this. Negative 5, negative 2 equals 10. 10 plus 4. So the slope is going to be 10 at negative 4. So that's kind of a kind of a steep slope almost. Then we have the next one. Let's do negative 1. Or the 0 for 1. Let's just go left to right as I wrote it. We take what would make that zero, so that would be one, so one plus four, x minus one, because you can't put that in there, otherwise it would end up as a zero, and one plus two. Now, if you do that, we got three over here, five over here, and multiply that out, we have 15 outside of x minus one. So, well, so that's that's an even steeper slope, really, because if you do rise over run, at least that's how I've always done it since I learned this in, like, sixth grade um, that's a rise of 15 and a run of one so that's that's a very steep slope going through uh, the point of one now for the last one I believe it's a negative two that should be placed in there what I believe is right so that's negative two plus four negative two minus one we've got x plus two make sure I'm not in camera so this should be two, and this should be hmm. one second. I'm seeing a problem with my notes. That's interesting. This is a negative three. So this will end up being, let me check. Yeah. Huh. I did this wrong earlier. But, you know, I, I found it now. I guess uh, I might have misdone that earlier. Plugged that in wrong. That's blowing my mind. But that doesn't really matter now. Because uh, that's a negative three and this is a two. So we got x plus two. Then multiply those out together, negative six. All right, so that's that's a less steep of a slope, but that's that's how it's going to be when it goes through each point. So the behavior going through is going to be at those slopes. Now, just really quick, just so we can see how far out it may go. We don't know exactly how far it goes. We're not going to focus on that. We're going to just see a point going out, just a point like let's see, let's do one between each zero. So we'll have one and negative 2. So let's just do negative 1. Just It's there. So what you'll do is you'll take your your starting factors up here, is right here, starting factors, and you'll plug in that point to all those and you'll find where on the y-axis that's at. So you'll find the y of the x that you already have, which is negative 1. So what you'll do is you'll plug negative 1 into all those. Negative 1 plus 4, negative 1 minus 1, negative 1 plus 2, 
and then we have 3, we'll have negative 2, and 1. So this will end up being about a negative 6. So for that, for that point, it's going to be negative 1, negative 6. So if you were to take the negative 1 and go all the way down, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, at that point, it's right there. And let's do the same thing for in between negative 4 and negative 2. Let's just do negative 3. So negative 3 plus 4. Negative 3 minus 1. Negative 3 plus 2. All right. So we got a 1. We got a negative 4. We got a negative 1. All right. Let's see. Yep. 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 All right. So this at this point, it will be negative 3. And it will be 4. So, at negative 3, the point is 4. So we'll go up 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, let me do that one more time. Okay. So, yeah. The point will be right there. Now, now that we have pretty much everything we need, this is just about all the math that you'll have to do for this part. Uh, we have our points between our zeros. We have our <clears throat> zeros. And we have our uh, behaviors at the zeros. Now it's just time to finish the line. Now, since all the multiplicities are 1, which is an odd number, they go through. So for all these, you're just going to go through. And we don't know if this is technically the zero, so we're just going to hop out. Or the turning point. We're going to hop out. And we're going to go through one more time. A bit less steep. And we're going to go oops, swing out. Whatever turning point that may be, we're going to go through this at a much steeper, and there you go. So, you can see it goes through, and it ends up being kind of like a sideways Z. Go figure. It goes from out into the distance at our end, fact, or our end behavior. It's through, goes around through the one point, through, goes around, goes through that one point, then goes through one more time, and ends at our end behavior. So that worked out. And that is what the graph would look like. So, that is sketching x cubed plus 5x squared plus 2x minus 8 with Steve.